Hello, and welcome to How to Win at Content Marketing, People First Content and Modern SEO. I am Carlos Mesa, the CEO and President of Crawl Content Media. Okay, well, we all know there are many content formats, um, but mainly three. So there is visual content, um, there is the video, pictures, graphs, etc., etc. We have audio content, so probably mostly podcast, uh, radio, um, and other types of audio content. Uh, but today we're going to focus on written content. So, of course, within written content, there are many types of different content. We have blog posts, which is one of the most common, um, popular types of written content, white papers, emails, how-to guides, case studies, but also product descriptions, product categories, website content in general. And uh, this is where we have expertise on. So uh, just to give, giving you that context, let's dive into agenda for today. So today we want to talk about um, three things. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of context and around algorithm updates uh, so you understand why we are talking today about people first content and modern SEO. Then we're going to dive into what do we mean by people first content. And last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about the present and what we see in the future of written content. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. Okay. So what has changed over the years? So here uh, we see the timeline of the different changes that Google have made to their algorithm. So probably about a decade ago, it was all around keywords, right? But over the years, um, the search engines are just, get, just getting smarter and smarter. And the purpose of getting them smarter has been to be able to communicate and understand how humans communicate. So they're really um, now getting much better at understand how humans speak. So you have heard the terms NLP, um, MUM, and AI for predicting how people, uh, you know, predicting what people mean or what is their intent behind their queries. You also probably heard about semantic SEO. So all these things are related um, in response to all the changes in the algorithm throughout the years. So I guess the, the punchline um, or the message here is that search engines are just getting better at understanding how humans communicate. So again, before it was all about keywords and, and writing for bots and writing for the algorithm. Now it's all about humans. So if you do not writing for the bots, who should you write for? Of course, I just, I just uh, gave it away. You should write for people. You should write for humans. So what do we mean by that? Empathetic people first content. So it's all about the search intent. The, Search intent is the why behind a search query. And with that, I want to revisit what are the different types of search intent. So there's informational intent. Um, this is when the searcher is looking for some type of information, of course, very obvious, but um, how to do this or how to do that. Um, I want to know about a city. I, know, I want to know about a country. I want to know about a, uh, a specific topic. So many of those informational intent start with what is X or how to X. Okay. Then there is navigational intent. Uh, this is uh, the intent for uh, people are lazy, lazy like myself, where I, I don't even want to uh, type a URL anymore. I just go to Google or any other search engine and type in, um, ask the, the, the search engine to take me where I want to go. For instance, let's say I want to sign in into my HubSpot account. So I go to so the search box, I'm going to type in HubSpot login. I know where I want to go. So this is navigational intent. Then there is um, a very common um, intent, which is transactional. Transactional intent is when I want to buy something. I want to make a transaction. Um, I already uh, made the purchase decision. I just want to know uh, where should I buy that. Let's say I want to get some new sneakers for myself, um, maybe some really cool Nike Jordans. So I'm going to type where to buy Nike Jordans. And then the search engine is going to help me find the different options to buy my, uh, my so coveted Nike Jordans, or let's say I want to buy a new PC. Um, so I'm just going to type in, I don't know, Surface Pro, where to buy, and then it's going to probably give me some options. And then there is commercial intent. It's, uh, let's say, uh, a close relative to transactional intent, but in commercial intent, I haven't made a decision or I don't know exactly what is that I'm going to buy. 
But um, to give you a more clear example, let's say I want to know what is the best uh, keyword research tool. Then I'm going to type in best key, key, uh, keyword research tool for 2022. Or what is the best CRM in the market? Or I don't know, what is the, what is the safest card uh, in 2022? And then with that intent, I'm going to find probably different options. And the search engine is going to take me to maybe a comparison site, a comparison blog, um, a listicle. Um, with the different the, the different options of the, the thing that I want to buy. Okay, so now again, intent is the why um, a searcher is um, typing certain information in the, in the search box. Okay, now that we talked about intent, we should talk about the who and the why. Before you start putting pen to paper in your content, you need to understand who are you writing for and why. Are you writing for them or why should they care what you're saying so you know if you focus on the what that's writing for keywords but if you focus on the who and the why that's people first content so the who is your audience and your audience you need to be very specific because the more specific it is the better is, is your content going to be for instance right now your my audience is seo strategist but even within SEO strategies, I could um, narrow it down to more specific audiences. So there might be SEO strategies for agencies, or it could be an SEO strategy for a brand. So it's very important to define your audience. And the more narrow you get, the more specific you get, the better your content could be. And now the why. Why would they care? What is it in it for them by reading your content? Why should they stay engaged? Okay, that is the intent. Are you solving a problem for, for them? Are you uh, answering their questions? All right, now we just talk about intent, the who and the why. Let's focus on emotions. It's very important that we try to connect with our readers at an emotional level. So instead of show and tell, which is, you know, our example here, benefit-driven copy is much better to focus on the problem that they're trying to solve. Connect with your readers at an emotional level. For instance, we have a writing service, and I could say we're the best writing service in the world, but would it be much better if I say, never worry about writing again? Maybe my reader at the other end say, oh my God, yes, I've been so worried about getting all this content written. How about, you know, I try these guys because, or at least read this content because they're trying to help me solve a problem. Whatever you do, you're trying to solve a problem for your reader. But instead of show and tell how awesome and how great your product or your service is, probably it's better if you just uh, focus on the problem that they're trying to solve. Okay, so here's an amazing example on how to connect at an emotional level. Probably some of you have seen these commercials. I really love them. They're, uh, they're, they're really, really interesting. So here you say of these gay people, uh, and one of them say, I can see how dragon works. And then she says, my brother is really into wheels. And then somebody says, yeah, he's a little freak. And then the punchline, well, simple crypt. So as you can see, it's all about the sentiment or the, um, the emotion about being a little bit different, right? Crypt is something new something that some people might be afraid of, you know, it's not, you know, it's not very common. It's not the, it's a very new way of doing, uh, of uh, doing financial transactions. So um, I think what the, the creators of this piece of content, they're trying to connect with people that feel a little bit um, that, that this is, is something different, very, very different and people are not used to. So they're trying to be different, right? But it's connecting with those people at an emotional level that it's okay to be different, right? And it's okay to be, to try something new. Okay, we just talked about connecting at an emotional level with your audience. And we wanna talk about how to win a people first content. So I'm gonna leave you with a few tips. Tip number one, personalize your content. Make it persona-based if possible. Again, that is the who, your audience. And the narrower, you can, the narrower you can get, the better. The more specific you can get in who your audience is, the better. Again, I'm talking to content marketers, but within content marketing, there can be different types of content marketers. It could be a content marketer for services. It could be a content marketer for B2B. It could be a content marketer for an agency. 
or content marketing for a large brand, uh, and so on and so on. So get as, as specific as possible. Tip number two, storytelling. And I want to make some emphasis in this, in this tip. Telling a story is such an important part of writing good content. Why is that? Storytelling helps us to connect at an emotional level with the audience. And it has been proven scientifically that when humans connect at an emotional level, they generate oxytocin. Oxytocin is a uh, happiness hormone. And when you connect at an emotional level, there is a better chance that your um, content is gonna land and uh, is gonna connect with your, with, with, your, um, with your reader. Also, narratives help humans um, understand concepts easier. And why is that? By putting a narrative together, our brain can put the different facts together, right? When there are uh, complex concepts um, alongside a narrative, it's easier for us to, under to understand. So storytelling is such an, um, an important part of writing good content. So if you, if you don't know um, how to go about a storytelling, um, check picture storytelling template, or check the uh, Disney storytelling template. Um, if you Google those two things, trust me, you're gonna find um, some inspiration. These two companies have been very, very successful at telling stories. I'm sure uh, many of you have watched more than one, one movie from Pixar or, or, or Disney, and they follow very predictable templates, and they're very good at it. So storytelling, very important for good content writing. Tip number three, have airtight readability. And what do we mean about airtight readability? There are a few things uh, to have really, really good readability. One is have short sentences and short paragraphs. Two, use bullet points. Make it easier to follow. Three, have images. It is recommended to have one image every hundred words. Some people might say that's too much, but it has been proven that when people use images, um, the, 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 the content is just going to be stronger and the message is going to be better received. So use as many images as possible in your content. And have proper layouts, you know, your structure, of your header, your subheader, etc. So have a good structure in your content. Font size. These are, you know, these are things that we sometimes we don't think about, but font size is very important. You, you gotta make it easier on the eye, right? So forget about um, font size number eight, font size number nine, none of that. So the recommended is font size number 16. 80 or 90% of the content out there, the web content out there is size 14. So there is, there is an opportunity to stand out by having size 16. And also use a font that is gonna be easier on the eyes. Sans serif, Calibri, really, really good funds uh, for good reliability. Okay? Tip number four, use examples. As you have seen throughout this presentation, I've been trying to use some examples. And the reason for that is because, again, helps drive the message home, makes it tangible, makes it real. Some of you will be able to relate to some of the examples that I'm providing here. The same in your content. If you're providing a piece, uh, a piece of content and you provide some examples with it, it's gonna make it easier on your reader and your audience to connect, to understand the concept that you're giving, okay? And last but not least, please, have a responsive content layout for mobile. And why is that? Now, maybe say 60 to 80% of us are consuming our content in our cell phones. And there's nothing worse than having a great piece of content that um, the reader disengages quickly because it's not responsive to mobile. Okay, so personalized content, storytelling, solid readability, providing examples, and have a responsive content layout for mobile experience. These are tips that we think are gonna help you to win at uh, people first content. So I mentioned examples, right? Here is a good example, Ho hopefully, helps you to understand the message that I'm trying, to, I'm trying to drive home. So here's something that we think it doesn't work. What is inbound marketing? And honestly, I don't wanna bore you to death trying to read this for you. But the message here is, look, this is overly descriptive, a very long paragraph. Look, I honestly, after sentence number three, I'm out. 
So how does a good piece of content look like? Okay, here's the counter example. What does work? What is inbound marketing? And here is very important um, to understand the structure of this piece of content. It has three key pieces. One is the hook, is the one that you know creates the emotional connection, set a scene, right? Um, here it says, is inbound lead generation working for you or are you experiencing lots of sleepless nights? And some of you might say, oh my gosh, that sounds like me. I've been losing some sleep because I cannot generate enough leads. Tell me more. So it creates a hook, okay? Then there is the line, setting expectations, explaining scope and ideas. Email marketing, on the other hand, attracts customers who have already started the buyer's journey, it goes to say. And then the last part, what is the significance of this? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Um, I'm, I'm ready to move on. And this is what we call the sinker. Is the part of the content that is going to drive the message home. And here it goes. By creating different kinds of content with solutions, potential leads are already looking for. You can attract and empower more people to give you more revenue. Such a powerful sentence and such a powerful sinker. So, again, a good example of what we think does work in uh, writing people first content. Okay, so here is the punchline. Write for humans. Humans respond to narratives and stories. Don't write for search algorithms anymore. Why? They have evolved and now they understand how we talk. So again, write for humans. And just to take the, um, this message even further, here's a, an old tweet from Dan Sullivan. You know, people keep asking, how can we rank better? How can we, um, you know, do better in, our, in, uh, in the SERP? And, you know, how to deal with a broad change? Do you, uh, do you want to do better? Just have great content, the same old boring answer. So I just, you know, wanted to bring this up to continue to drive this point home. Okay, so here is a, a technique that I want to share with you, which uh, we think is going to be very powerful um, when you want to write people first content. Topic cluster. What is topic cluster? I love this example. This graph um, is a really good representation of what topic clustering is. So here, our big topic cluster would be meal or maybe dinner. Within dinner, we have the different topics, fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. And within those topics, or the cluster of topics, we have subtopics. So within fruits, we have strawberries, bananas, apples, avocados, yes, avocados, fruits. Protein, we have the subtopics, chicken, fish, beef, etc., etc. So I think you, you get the point, right? Topic cluster is meal, dinner, and the sub or the topics within the cluster: fruits, grains, vegetable, protein, and so on and so on. And you can get it more, even more specific. Okay, but this is the, the overall concept of topic clustering. So why using topic clustering instead of focusing on keywords? Not only topic clustering is going to help you improve your SEO, it's going to deliver a better experience for your reader. And the reason why is because you're not only trying to answer one question, as with keywords, you're trying to answer all the questions. So again, much better experience for your, for your reader. And also, it's going to be great for your linking strategy, internal links and external links. It's going to increase web conversion and it's going to increase the engagement. Why? Because your user is going to spend more time in your site. It's going to spend more time reading your content. You're, out, you're trying to answer all the questions. So here's another good example of topic clustering. This is from Ashraf. You know, I like wine. I, I'm sure some of you uh, do too. So uh, near and dear to my heart topic or topic cluster, um, all about wine, wine basics. So in this piece of content, you can find uh, links to other pieces of content within that topic cluster of wine, right? You can uh, go and, and learn about different types of grapes, different wine styles, how to taste wine, guide for beginners, et cetera, et cetera. So again, hopefully this helps drive home the concept of topic clustering. It's all about wine, and then within wine, there are different topics, um, of course, related to wine. Here's probably an example that is um, more familiar to, to, to some of you in the audience. This topic, of course, SEO. And within SEO, we have your technical SEO, 
your, your backlinks, SEO best practices, and even within SEO best practices, we have the tools, Google Analytics, Google My Business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here in this example, what I would like to highlight is not only the structure of the, of the cluster, but also the intra and interlinking within the topics. Very, very important for your topic cluster to be successful, to have also a good inter and interlinking strategy. Okay, so now that we talked about topic clustering, I wanna talk a little bit about voice search. Is voice search still a thing? Is it still relevant? So here's an interesting quote from Martin Split from Google. Uh, I think a, a few months ago in a podcast, um, Martin Split said voice search is not the future. So if Google is saying that uh, voice search is not the future anymore, then should you optimize for voice search? And we think the answer is yes, or maybe absolutely. And why should you optimize for voice search? Well, the use of voice-driven queries continues to increase. Maybe many of you own an Alexa or a Google Home. Of course, if you have iPhones, you're using Siri, right? So if a lot of search is being driven by voice search, why not optimize for it? And anyway, you you want to write in a conversational way. So by writing in a conversational way, human or people first content, you're already optimizing for voice search. And you know we know that Google already have an speakable schema markup in beta, so you're future proofing your SEO. So it's a no-brainer to optimize optimize for voice search. And now that we're talking about the present and the future of SEO, I think it's very relevant for us to talk a little bit about AI generating content. So is AI content equal a spam penalty? So maybe the question is, can Google detect AI generating content? And Joe Mueller from Google said, we cannot claim that we can detect AI generated con content, but the web spam team can definitely take action if we do so, if we do detect AI generating content. So what they pretty much saying is that the algorithm is not ready to detect AI generated content, but if they do find the content um, being AI generated, they're going to take action. So I think it's just a matter of time until they can uh, update the algorithm to detect AI generated content. So with that in mind, is AI generated content good or bad for SEO? Well, AI is here to stay, I think. Um, it's becoming very ubiquitous um, and it's uh, getting to more, time, more parts of our lives, right? And now there's a lot of uh, new tools to generate AI, AI content or uh, AI driven content. So is the next dot com revolution? Maybe it is. So what should we do with that information? So what we think is you got to proceed with caution, especially in, in, in if you're thinking about SEO. If you're using AI to create non SEO content, maybe there is no harm in using AI. But for now, proceed with caution. We see AI um, as a tool to turbocharge your writers, just make them more efficient. Maybe overcome writer's block, ideation, first drafts. We recently um, acquired an, a company that is using AI to generate first drafts of content, and then we pair with humans to make better content and makes it very, very affordable, very efficient. We, could, we can create lots and lots of content in a very efficient way. But there is a, a very specific type of market for that. The reality, and what we're trying to say here, is that human or people first content is gonna win the day and it's gonna help you rank better, have better results and, and, and have better business results. So AI generated content, we'll have to wait and see how it evolves, but for now, proceed with caution. Okay, so this takes us to the end of our presentation and I want to leave with you a couple of messages. SEO is always changing and search engines continue to evolve to understand how humans communicate. So create people first content that connects with your audience at an emotional level. 
and use topic clustering to keep people engaged. Not to answer one question, but to answer all the questions. Okay. Um, thanks for tuning in. Again, I'm Carlos Mesa from Crowd Content, and I wish you a great rest of conference. Thank you.